Hi chickens, I'm in my new flat and uh, this is my second, going to be my second full day here so still a lot of things to organise and sort out and a lot of things still not unpacked um, and my wardrobe hasn't arrived so and my drawers haven't arrived yet so I haven't been able to put any clothes away yet um, and we haven't ordered our sofas so it's still pretty raw, I'm going to be completely honest, it's still uh, still looking a little bit nuts in certain areas of the flat. <laughs> uh, this is the this is our new cruelty free kitchen, this is where the vegan magic is going to happen, I'm very excited about that. Um, and once we've gotten all of the cleaning exactly done and how we want it, um, the, uh, the kitchen cupboards and stuff have already been cleaned, parts of the bathroom have already been cleaned but we need to kind of properly make everything fresh, impossibly fresh and lovely. Um, then after that we will be doing the spiritual cleaning which will involve a cleansing of the whole apartment. But look, I can see the sea from my window. This is my money tree because everyone needs a little bit of a little bit of luck and help in that department, don't they, sometimes? And I'll just lift this blind up. There's the ocean. This blue bit here. There is the sea. Gorgeous. I see my man badger has brought some um, what, I, what I reckon are crystals into the room. Let's have a look. Hello and welcome to Crystal Kitchen. Oh, he has brought crystals into the kitchen. How witchy of him. He's got himself a piece of amethyst, which looks very much like a lady part in my estimation. Some obsidian. Good call, baby. Good call. Black tourmaline. Oh, cool. I know he's got some selenite in here because I bought it for him. It's official. I'm married to a hippie. The sparkle on amethyst is just too much, isn't it? Just too much. It's so fucking stunning. My favourite stone of all time is this little gem. Beautiful. Glitzy. Glitzy, glitzy. Of course we had to sort out the bookcase. We can't really, <laughs> we can't really spend too long without a bookcase. So the bookcase is pretty much arranged. Uh, I have been asked quite a few times when I'm going to get back on the reviews and recommendations flex. And to be honest with you, that structure is a little rigid for me. Um, especially since in the last year I've really not had a great deal of time. My life has been in upheaval quite a lot of the time. I've already moved once this year. Um, so yeah now I'm moving again for the second time so um, you know there's this sort of uh, quite a lot going on in my life like um, but I do like to dip in and out of books so it would be better for me if I could just talk about you know what poetry I'm dipping into what kind of reference book for psychology I might be dipping into like I've got fiction and memoir here and here um, and then I've got my spirituality and psychology all up here. And then um, this is our non-fiction. So this is poetry. This is poetry. There's a little bit of overflow of poetry into this one and reference. Um, and then this is all non-fiction. Non-fiction, non-fiction. These are my uh, Russian study resources um, which I need to have in the one place, of course, so that I can study at a moment's notice whenever I feel like getting a little bit getting a little bit of Russian. <laughs> Whenever I fancy a little bit of the old Ruski Yizuk, I can just get my Kinigi down <laughs> from yonder and practice. Practica. The last video I made was about meditation and a few people did mention that they have different ways of meditating, like they don't really like to sit but they do consider their run to be a form of meditation or um, something else that they do to be a form of meditation and I'm really glad that that was brought up and I'm glad that was mentioned because I totally, totally agree. I don't think meditation needs to be just about sitting. But the reason that I favour that and the reason that I talk about that so much is because I feel as a witch that it's really important for me to be able to do that to just focus on the object of mindfulness in a way that I, I always considered to be slightly more challenging, to be honest, in a sense. Um, when I go running, yes, it is a form of meditation, absolutely, and if I could find my fucking running shoes right now, I'd go right now, seriously, um, but, they, but they've been lost in the madness. <laughs> I suspect that they're next door off under a pile of clothes and I don't want to wake my boyfriend up, my lovely man badger. But yeah, I do. I, when I go running, that is a form of meditation. It absolutely sorts me out. Um, and there are other things that I do as well. But I feel like meditation for me, in terms of sitting and focus on the breath or focus on a mantra, 
really um, it tightens up my brain it it flexes the focus muscle and the focus muscle is what I need to do witchcraft it's what I need to sustain creative visualization to sustain journeys on the astral it's what I need to focus with sympathetic magic on actually investing my energy my will my intention into these objects that I'm using to um, to glean my result so for me, it's a practice in discipline as well. It's as much as anything. It's actually to tighten the muscle of the mind, as it were. But there are other things that I do, and there's something that I've recently started doing that I wanted to mention because I think it's so effective, and I know that it's become a really big deal lately, and that is adult colouring. This is the one I'm using, the vintage colouring book, and I've already done a couple of them already. Uh, the thing I like about this one is I really like the patterns. There's a lot of Zentangle type stuff and, um, you know, also a lot of more kind of geometric style patterns as well. The thing that I really like about it is that there's there's nothing on the other side, which means I can use my Sharpies. Because quite a lot of these books, they have patterns on both sides, which is such a shame because I like to use some pretty heavy duty Sharpies and the colour just goes straight through. So with this one, there's nothing on the other side and I can just pop a piece of A4 paper as a divider you can see it's already a bit mashed up with sharpie juice there um, and that kind of just helps me to keep the colors separate and make sure nothing runs through but look at these patterns i mean that is really in itself going to be a form of meditation isn't it this is the one i'm doing at the moment so i'm not quite finished with this one yet This is the very first one that I did and it was so soothing, like immediately I thought to myself, whoa, I could get used to this, this is lovely, <laughs> this is so soothing. So yeah, I definitely, for me, adult colouring has definitely worked out. Um, my friend Siobhan introduced me to it, she, um, I mean I knew I could see adult colouring books around all over the place, but I don't get into something just because it's obviously what's on the bookshelves and it's obviously what people are into. Actually my... Um, my feeling was that I didn't really have time. That was what I kept telling myself. I don't have time to focus on colouring at this point in my life. <laughs> it's like, it's not really my priority. But actually, I, I began to think of it as no different from a meditation. My friend Siobhan kind of described to me how great it was for her. And I was just like, mm, yeah, go on then. I'll have a bit of that. Time for a reading now. Little daily draw with my Psychic Tarot Oracle for the Heart by John Holland. And maybe another cup of tea. Right, I'm filming now, babe. All right. I'm showing the peeps my smoothie making abilities. Chocolate, chop, lovely. That's how you do it. Ooh, that's what she said. Don't boss me around, you slag. I know what I'm doing. Let me dice it first so it so the blender yeah. doesn't have to do that much work, love. Yeah, Alright. Um, I'm uh, parched. Right. Hey, I've made you a bloody cup of coffee already, you slag. What do you like? Right, here we go. I noticed there's a big green juice culture on the internet. I'm not really sure what it actually needs. I don't know if there's any rules or if it just needs to be green. I imagine there is elitism, Carol. There's always elitism and stuff like this. Like, oh, it's, it's not elitism, babe. It's just rules. Like, you you know, in the green juice world, what is, what is a green juice? What does it constitute? Do you know what I mean? You can't just make things up as you go, well, we do, but... I'm saying in, in the world of green juice, like on Instagram and such, I'm not really sure what they mean by green juice. I'm not sure if they mean any old iron. Let me wash this spinach. Any old iron, any old iron, any old iron. Probably, Popeye, Popeye fuel. Probably green if it's all green. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I'm and wondering, no oranges. If, does it need to have like spirulina in it or whatever? <laughs> that's why you really need a um, You need thing. a ting for this, yeah, don't you? Yeah, you do. I can't wait to edit this. <laughs> I'm just going to put like key bits in it, like you going, oh lovely. <laughs> it's just basically going to be Creepy Cockney does a smoothie. Creepy Cockney would be good for your channel, babe. You should make a channel called Creepy Cockney. Everyone's got a channel these days. Creepy Cockney. Make the magic happen, mate. Cockney. Point to anyone who knows where that comes from. Major points. In fact, oh, fucking come and live with us if you know where that comes from, because you're obviously the you're obviously the third wheel in our relationship. Fucking spinach in it. It's Popeye fuel, mate. Popeye fuel. Popeye fuel. Sorry. Yeah, just bring it all the way, and I can do it to right, and do it until I'm until I'm sure. Okay. Give me some chance. Water there. Boom. That. That's nice. Look at that. Black Dude, I'll wash. I'll wash some kale, shall I? Cheers, love. You wash that cake. You're my glamorous assistant. I'll wash this cake. Oh, babe, thanks very much. What's that? 
Well, the stalks are probably the best bit, so we should try and put it in really. Oh, so they didn't your mum teach you about the greens? Yes. Oh, is it your greens? Yeah, you talk about my mother so Where's lonely. The, the best bit is. The greens are the best. The greens are the stalky bits are the best bit. Love them stalky bits, mate. Fucking love that shit, mate. Fucking hell. Yeah, it's doing pretty well. How's about that for a slice of fried gold? Mmm. Mm -hmm. It's like something from a Hollywood film. What? Like a, it's like a prop, like like gunge for for Ghostbusters. It or does whatever. look a little bit like that, doesn't it? Or the stuff always it used to get in the uh, the gun. They used to gunge on that kids' TV program. Oh, what, um, oh shit! What was it called? I mean, Madhouse. Funhouse. Funhouse. Oh my god, Funhouse! Oh, I wanted to go on Funhouse as well. It looks so much fun. You wanted to go on Funhouse for Melanie and Martina, mm. like every other boy on the planet. No, I Have we have a straight boy at the play? Maybe, <laughs> but I was more um, inclined about the little, you know, the, the rollers which look like they crushed you at the end. I just wanted to go for them, they look fun. Like the kind of thing you get car washes and whatnot. Yeah, they did. They Fun House was definitely good. I used to watch it with my sister all the time. Pat yeah. Sharp's mullet was a bit frightening though. So it's Putting just. Some of that linseed at the end though. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. May also contain mustard. Yeah, Ooh. I know. I thought that was quite <laughs> odd. Isn't that really weird? Because it's got nothing unnatural in it. It's just linseed and dried fruit, and then at the end it says, "May contain mustard, though." May contain it's mustard. It's like why? It was made in the factory. It's making mustard. Yeah. So they're making linseed and mustard in one factory. Yeah. Mm. Love a bit of mustard, me. What's next? Fucking wallpaper and artichokes. <laughs> Rubber gloves and children's toys. <laughs> Vaseline and lawnmowers. <laughs> <laughs> Cat flaps and crudités. <laughs> well, you get commentary with this video. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it's, it's enjoyable. You get two for one. Bun, <laughs> bun, a pair of idiots just talking low bollocks. Speak for yourself, darling. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah, speak for yourself, darling. That's right. Telling the accent's up a notch there. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> I've, I've just somebody messed with your accent button, because somebody messed with mine, I've done it. Oh, quite. Just too. a moment ago, I was talking normally, and now I'm talking like I'm narrating Winston Churchill's uh, funeral. Gone, gone through great effort to Love shed him. my oi polloi accent. Absolutely. Long I mean, there. not to be classes, but I'm sick of talking like a great unwashed. What can I say? <laughs> Talk with a bit more class. A bit, bit more class. Yeah, that's lovely. We should keep this up all day, babe. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how long I could keep it up for, really. I don't think you can keep it up for very long. You are very low class. Mm. I am slumming it with you, let's face it. Right. We went through this yesterday. You're lower than me, mate. You're a fucking chimney sweep, mate. Right. Now I'm just going to put a couple of limes in the top. It's because actually, one orange makes a hell of a lot of juice. Mother Nature, there's no substitute for her, you know what I mean? Not really, mate. You can actually, well, we can put the linseed into the mix for now, but you can actually just pop the linseed on the top. What's it like? Is it nice? See you munching away on it there. Quite seedy. Well, it is seed, darling. Mm. <laughs> That's funny, that, isn't it? It's funny how that happens, isn't it? I'd never, how it happens, I'd never there. expect that to be seedy as it is. It's funny how when things are made of seeds, they're a bit, fucking, seed. they're a bit fucking seedy, aren't they? I get it. Here's my new recipe book um, where I will definitely be putting in the drinks area. Which is hell, the skilled little cupcake on. Mostly booze. Uh, mo mostly booze, yes, mostly cocktails, but the odd smoothie. The odd smoothie is. Please, we're going to have a whole other book for our cocktails, our cocktail concoctions that we're going to try. Let's have a little go. Pass me a straw. Can we call it the Fisherman's Funk? Oh no. <laughs> we can call it Slimer's Dead Uncle. <laughs> Slimer's Should we call it Slimer's Dead Uncle? You know, yeah. Slimer from Ghostbusters? Yeah, Slimer's Dead Uncle. What the? F Look at the colour of that. Slime is dead, uncle. Slime is dead, uncle. It's ready for you, so. <laughs> oh, let's have a taste of this. Wow. Mmm. Get that down your neck, love. If I drink all of that, I know it's very good for me. Yeah. But it should have kiwi in it instead of black kale. That's my argument, is normally we put quite a bit of sweet fruit, so we always have raspberries, strawberries, or kiwis, or bananas. And this has none of them. It only has the juice of two oranges. The juice of Sabu. <laughs> <laughs> if you know well, where that comes from, come and live with us. Come and live with us. Come and live with us. It is by will alone I set my juice in motion. 
does remind me of eating grass. I used to eat grass, by the way, when I was a kid. And bubbles. It's not at all like eating grass. It's lovely. It's fresh. Here we are at the seaside where I live now. Mm. Great, day. Nonetheless, gorgeous. Yeah, we live here now, don't we? We live here now, baby. Thanks to hard work, perseverance and magic with a K. I agree. A little bit of magic, you can go all the way to the seaside. Hi babes, welcome to another video scrapbook taking you through these books that I purchased from my local witchy shop which I've visited a couple of times now and she's got some really really cool shelves of pre-owned pre-loved books and some of the stuff that is in there is, is gold, is absolute gold this is just a very small like slice, uh, a very tiny example of, of the treasure that she's got in there so I thought I'd take you through this okay so I got a copy of The History of Magic by Eliphas Levi and um, I've been meaning to read this and um, another book particularly that I, that's been I've been advised to read I've been kind of it's been recommended to me before in the past um, so I'm going to start yeah with The History of Magic by Eliphas Levi so I'm really really pleased with that this is brand new um, this has never been touched the spine has never been cracked so um, and this was actually one of the more expensive ones I got this for eight pounds which is kind of more of a like a standard buy a book brand new type of price but the others were shockingly cheap um, probably much cheaper than they should be like this book um, serpent worship which is clearly like from the 70s I think I think it's probably fair to assume the copyright inside says 1980 and it's Tudor Press um, and it's uh, that's a Canadian uh, publishing house so it appears because it says Canada inside it but yeah the design is uh, is really really 70s isn't it? it doesn't it look like something from a film I think it looks so cool I just had to have it I have no real interest in you know serpent worshipping traditions or anything like that but I just thought that is such a cool looking book I need to own it it's just it, it, there's something about it that's got me written all over it and I was like yeah that needs to be mine this cost me £3.50 guys £3.50 which I really think for something that you know I've never seen before or heard of before that's clearly out of print now um, and it's just like really old and really of its time I think £3.50 is a fucking steal for this book okay so here's some of what can be found in this incredible looking book um, you've got the supposed phallic origin of serpent worship ancient monuments of the west mythology of the ancients characteristics of the pagan deities um, over on the other side, India, conspicuous in the history of serpent worship. Numerous traces of the serpent in Greece. Egypt is the home of serpent worship. Mexican temple of Montezuma. The serpent emblem in Mexico. 
it's just an intensely cool find and I'm really happy with it. I also picked up a copy of Laurie Cabot's Power of the Witch. I've been interested in reading this because Joanna DeVoe um, has praised, I think, this one and another one of Laurie Cabot's books very highly and blogged about them before. So I'm really interested in Laurie Cabot in terms of the little videos that she puts out, like advice videos and stuff, opinion videos that she films. Um, I just think they're really interesting. So and I'm, I'm just interested in... Um, the way that she kind of in her own way brought witchcraft to popular consciousness in America and talked more about what it is rather than what Hollywood thinks it is. I love the front cover I'm not sure what edition this is but I'm doubtful that it is the most recent edition because it is quite old and battered. This one was definitely at one time or another belonged to a library um, and it has the little ticket thing in there but that doesn't necessarily mean that somebody um, at one point or another stole it. Quite often um, you know, library books do get sold on after a while. So, yeah, this is definitely, definitely very pre-loved if it was if it belonged to a library. The next two are the ones that I'm actually most excited about. This is an image forming darkly, women and initiation. This looks really, really cool. And um, this is written by a Jungian writer. A well-known Jungian analyst, Bani Shorter, writes here about how women are initiated into becoming themselves. Her book is an important contribution to the field of analytical psychology as well as to the increasingly popular study of women's spirituality. There's a lot in here about rites of passage for women and just about the divine feminine in life and, and how to connect with it and stuff like that. It looks really, really awesome. I'm, I'm hugely looking forward to reading that. And this one as well... Um, the Goddess Changes by Felicity Woonwell, a personal guide to working with the goddess. I'm really excited about this. This is so heavy. Well, the page stock is amazing. The page stock is, is very heavy. It does lie very heavy. And weirdly, inside the book, there is a postcard for this book. So that was quite strange to me. Um, and also the inscription on the inside front cover is from somebody called Felicity. And I'm kind of wondering if that is Felicity Woonwell. That would, it would kind of make a little bit of sense to me um, that somebody had it signed by Felicity Woonwell and that would also maybe be why there's a postcard inside of the book. I'm wondering if somebody went to a publicity event for the book or a signing for the book and came away with a postcard and also came away with the author's signature. Um, that would kind of make sense to me. What do you guys think? I think that's, I think that probably is Felicity Woonwell's inscription right there. So that's really exciting from 1991. And this was reduced from £10 to £6. So that's... Uh, Super cool. Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. Look, look, in tiny little letters, signed first edition. Okay, so I am right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is Felicity Woonwell's signature. <laughs> All right, okay, cool. That's that's awesome. I'm, uh, I'm kind of pleased that I was right about that. <laughs> it just says right there, but I totally just didn't look. To be honest with you, I actually didn't look that closely at the prices of these books when I bought them. Um, I, I I glanced at them, obviously. I don't I don't sign a blank check when I go to the counter in a witchy shop or anything. I'm not a fucking millionaire, but I was in the market for some books. I wanted some books and I wanted to cheer myself up. So I didn't look too closely, which is probably why I didn't see until this moment that it is a signed first edition. What an idiot. I must admit, I really struggled to read last year. There was so much going on. I moved twice last year. Um, well, I moved three times if you include holding up at my mother's for a week. So I had to take a lot of things to my mum's and stay there for a week between moving from my old um, flat to my new place. And I moved areas as well. Like I moved to the seaside and um, my business was, you know, there was a lot of foundations being laid for my business, a lot of things changing, a lot of stuff going on. Reading really did get put on the back burner. Um, and that's really sad to me, but it's just one of those things that happens, you know, um, your reading habits do change, things do fluctuate, things do come up, and I'm not going to be pissed off with myself about it, it's just one of those things, but I definitely am getting back into it now, and I'm kind of spending a little bit more time reading, not still not as much as I would like, but definitely getting back into the habit of it after having a very, very crazy 2015, so I'm really looking forward to getting started on these, and I just thought I would share them for you in a video, scrapbook darlings, so hopefully this has been interesting, yeah, hope you enjoy it, much love.